That's a good start there. <laughs> Actually, this is a recording, is it? Welcome everyone to the meeting. Sorry, this is my part. You can talk among yourselves. <laughs> Alright, we're going to sing a few choruses, then we go into the uh, destiny. <laughs> Not the talk chorus, we're doing this yet. <laughs> choruses, destiny, then I do it. Then uh, we see if we can just talk in the mind. We'll start with 260. Two, 260. Phones on silent. I'll put away your phone. <coughs> 260. I will see him do the lot. Yep. Alright, after two. One, two. I will see him do the lot. 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 I will see him
Pastor Nigel. Pastor Nigel. Kathy. Kathy. I guess it's Kathy. 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 Yeah, Father God, we know, Lord, that by your son's stripes we are healed, Lord God, and that thou hears the prayers of the righteous, Lord God, and Lord, you, you know these needs, you know these wants, Lord God, you're the, the master designer, Lord God, and we know, Lord God, that you're well able to, to sort all these issues out, Lord God, and we just uh, leave them with you now, Lord God, that you'll... Uh, speedily uh, act upon it lord god and lord we just ask you now to bless this evening lord god that the reason this works is because you're at the center of it lord god and we just uh, ask you to to bless the word to bless the items lord god just to bless everything we do this day in the name of jesus christ
Yeah. Hello, my name is Mary from, from the Fresno, California Revival Fellowship, and um, I can really uh, thank the Lord. He um, brought me out of a, a really bad lifestyle. First of all, He filled me with this Holy Spirit, and when I did, I spoke in tongues. And um, I got baptized by full immersion. Um, he's healed me from um, hard drug addiction, alcohol, soft drugs. We were just really into the drug scene. And um, he healed all that instantly. Um, he, he healed my broken heart. Ten days after I um, got filled with the Holy Spirit, my son killed himself. So the Lord knew in his perfect timing when to fill me with the Spirit so I could uplift my husband. And um, one of the testimony cards that said what the fellowship had done for you, our brother sister in the fellowship, um, our pastor and his wife and the fellowship rallied around us when that happened and we were new in the Lord. And um, I'll never forget that, how they upheld us and, and um, really it's just really hard to explain because they have held and held us up because we have no one else to do that for us. Um, so uh, he has healed our broken heart. Um, I have another daughter that's uh, living and I have grandchildren. They're all filled with the Holy Spirit. They're not coming along right now. Um, but I know that that's all in God's timing. He um, is perfect. Everything that he does is perfect. Maybe not in when we think he should do things for us, but when it's best for us. Um, he, my husband and I were married 25 years before we came to the Lord, and um, that was a difficult thing at first because I was always, I like to do things myself. I still do, but <laughs> the Lord has really shown me that I need to, uh, that I, my husband is the head of the household, and that uh, I should look to him, um, and I try to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord. Um, I have wonderful brothers and sisters in the Lord, uh, all over the world. Uh, it, it's funny, Bobby and Kelly are here, and they're from the States too, and, and um, they originally were in the, in the Fresno Fellowship too, so they're old brothers and sisters, right? <laughs> anyway, so I just want to thank the Lord. He has done so much for us. We're in Ireland again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, thank you. Amen. 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 Well, we'll have more, a few more chorus before we uh, have another testimony, <coughs> which is going to be Marsha. Marsha? Yeah? How do you pronounce your name? Marsha. Marsha. <laughs> Sorry, your name comes up. Let me ask. <coughs> five one five. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. That's a great testimony. Yep, yeah, got it. After two. One, two.
Here we go. We'll have another one. Uh, five, four, two. Five, four, two. Five, four, three, yeah. <coughs> Great and mighty. After two, one, two. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is the King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is the King. We lift the hand together and we stand and we sing. inside I, I I became a mother very young because I was so lonely and I thought the children will <laughs> make me feel like uh, that, that, that I didn't was alone so I became a mother very young and that was of course very hard with all the trouble that I had and um, yeah so it was really surviving for me and I didn't even yeah I didn't even had an option in my head that I could turn to God because I didn't believe in God but sometimes I went to um, I moved a lot in these in these years also. Um, I, I went to shelters and with the children and, and things and then I wanted to make because I didn't have a house and I wanted to make a new start because yeah I had a responsibility towards my children and I want to be a good example but I couldn't because I I was in a circle and I moved like through whole the Netherlands and, and every time I moved I, I, I remember that I went to churches because I thought like well Maybe I can get help there or anything, and and the social workers also advised me like go oh, to the church, like the Salvation Army or the, those things. But they never told me there the gospel or anything. They could maybe help with practical things, but yeah. So um, so that went on for like when I was like around 30 years, and um, yeah. And what I want to say is that I never heard the gospel in those churches, and even my brother went to a Pentecostal church, and I. With Christmas, I will went with him, and yeah, I, I, I nobody told me the gospel. I, 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 I remember that I went uh, to the altar call and gave my heart to Jesus. I did that, and I really want to believe that there was a God and, I, and that I could have a better life, but it, it just, yeah, I did, I did receive nothing, so there was not any power, and so I went away empty again. So, um, yeah, when I was around 30, I got out, out of the relationship with the father of the children and I, uh, I was again wanted to have a new start and I was thinking about my life and yeah I was like okay I can go <laughs> do two things, two things or I just end my life or I uh, w w would have a wall and I would be very bitter and maybe just isolate myself and not trust anybody anymore but that was the moment that I think the Lord spoke to me and it was through a YouTube video and there was a woman that she, she was 
talking about God and that I and that there's a spiritual warfare on the world and um, yeah that Jesus would come back and that and that we needed to repent and everything so and something just clicked and I was like okay well I really want to have a relationship with God and I also I realized that I was a sinner and that God was not happy with me so so all of a sudden I had this fear in God and I believed in God and and then I, I just get, get a, I got a hunger to know more things about that and I started to search everything on the internet and I had a Bible I, at home I never read it and I, I noticed that I had it and I took it and I started to read in the Bible and all these things I searched up on the internet and then I saw like scriptures that I needed to get baptized and 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 also that I that that spiritual people spoke in tongues I didn't know that that was receiving the Holy Spirit but I saw these miracles in the Bible and I believed them and so um, yeah so one of these nights I was singing and and all of a sudden I received the Holy Spirit and uh, I spoke in tongues and yeah I can remember that I really longed uh, to have a relationship with God every night I would when the children go to bed I would sing to God and yeah and then I and, and then I received the Holy Spirit and I right away I felt also that uh, that was um, the thing I, I my whole life I was searching for uh, I felt very strong when I received the Holy Spirit and I felt very loved and accepted by God and um, and yeah and that's and and then I uh, had a desire to get baptized so I called the church and I just I didn't know what church I just called the nearest church and I asked to get baptized and they said I needed to wait like for like six months and then I called around another church and then it was a few months and after four months I could get baptized so I did it and I was very happy and God was really answering my prayers I didn't have any um, desire to use drugs anymore or take medicine or anything and everybody in my street thought that I was crazy and everybody was <laughs> looking at me with his big eyes and I was telling everybody about God and nobody wanted to have anything to do with me but that was fine and then um, yeah I, I started to look for a church who did it God's way and I ended up in all these Pentecostal churches and saw a lot of bad things and hypocrisy and everything and and, and, and God was really showing me and learning me things through the scriptures like 1 Corinthians 14 and the born again uh, John 3 and I always went up to the front because I asked all these questions uh, to the pastors and everybody was like why are you talking to the pastor and why are you asking him all these questions because yeah I, I nobody would um, yeah they were treated like they were very important people and you could not just walk up to them with the Bible and I did it and I asked them all these questions and they couldn't give give me a clear answer so I was like well maybe that was the church for then and not anymore so I just went on and yeah till it became so worse that I couldn't handle it anymore and I just went home and I was like okay maybe I should just worship God at home and, and then I, 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 I decided to pray and fast for a church and then I did that and I yeah I met somebody from the Revival Fellowship and and he told me a few questions on the street, street and he handed me a pamphlet so I called and, and, and yeah the next day I was in the meeting and I really saw yeah I, I, I didn't um, um, instantly uh, uh, yeah knew that it was the truth but I, on that day I got myself baptized again and first I, I thought I was I was at the Jehovah Witnesses so I was very scared and I was observing everything and I was like okay what is this so but yeah it's it just after the meeting I just got myself baptized and after that yeah I can say that uh, my whole life has changed I, I, I uh, learned to use the Holy Spirit bef because I before I um, was in the Revive Fellowship I they didn't teach me to pray in tongues of every day and they said it could be also from the enemy and everything so I was scared to use it so when I was in Revive Fellowship I started to use the Holy Spirit and in the beginning it was difficult because I wanted to do things on my own strength so I fell away for a year because I didn't pray, pray a lot in, in the Spirit and uh, in that year a lot of bad things happened and I was falling back in bad habits again and after a while I was thinking like no what did I do and I lost so something very precious and I start praying again and I really made a choice like okay this is what I want to do I go on to give everything to the Lord because when you come in a revival fellowship and you see all these people like very serious walking their walk it's it can be a lot for people you know and, and some people just want to go at Sunday to the church 
um, and have their worldly life. But this is real, really very serious here. And that was like a decision I needed to make to also let it work in my life. And since I did it and I really stand behind that choice that this is my life and this is what I want to do, the Lord is so good to me and He made, made everything new in my life. And of course, my, my, my children are coming along to the fellowship and they are all spirit-filled. And uh, yeah, the Lord is just healing my life and also the life of my children. And I, I experienced a lot of signs and miracles and healings and I, I, I can live the life that Jesus is living and that I, I found it so marvelous, the plan of God that I realized what I what I'm yeah, what, what God offers uh, offer offering us and um it's, it's I love to go, to go out reaching on the street with people and pray with people and, and and see that God is also working in their lives and that I can give people hope and and, and the same thing that I have, and that's the most wonderful thing that I that I have, and all the blessings and everything. That's just an extra thing. But I'm so blessed and thankful that God gave me the rest and a hope and a future. And yeah, I'm I'm really hoping that the Lord uh, will return and that I can hold fast till the end. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Marsha. All right, we'll make this the last one. After this, we're going to the uh, six nine three. Everybody know this one? No. It's not up there. Oh no. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick. Have a fun day. After two. One, two.
read it like a little uh, <laughs> Welsh big glass small. <laughs> it's Dutch. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is something I wrote a few years ago, but uh, it's about, about the Lord's return. Lord Jesus is returning soon. It may be morning, night, or noon. With wondrous signs, the times will let us know. Some will be left, and others taken. The righteous called, the fools forsaken. No time to say goodbye before we go. The Lord is coming back again. The Bible tells us so. But we don't know exactly when. The Bible tells us so. He's coming back a second time. Not like the first time. He's coming back in power to reign. Not like the first time at all. So let's, oh, let's be sure we are walking right. That our flame is burning bright. Rejoicing with a new song in our heart. And as we hope with one accord, we all shall see our reward and be with Jesus never to depart. The Lord is coming back again. The Bible tells us so. But we don't know exactly when. The Bible tells us so. He's coming back a second time. Not like the first time. He's coming back in power to reign. Not like the first time at all. We'll put on immortality, death swallowed up in victory, looking wholly forward to that day. Justice will come to every soul before heavens and earth wrapped like a scroll, but the word of God will never pass away. Coming back again, the Bible tells us so. We don't know exactly when. The Bible tells us so. He's coming back a second time. Not like the first time. He's coming back in power to reign. Not like the first time at all. find it so I'll sing without the music and it's on the same theme as um, what Bob and Gail was just sang about it's called Till He Comes I'm gonna keep on working till he comes till he comes there's nothing in this world worth turning around to see my eyes are on the prize that's awaiting me by and by and I'm gonna keep on working till he comes there's work to be done, there's victories to be won. There's joys up the road that's never yet been told. There's a treasure awaiting me in that land by faith I see. And I'm gonna keep on working till he comes. Yes, I'm gonna keep on working till he comes, till he comes. There's nothing in this world we're turning around to see My eyes are on the prize That's awaiting me by and by And I'm gonna keep on working till he comes There's a message to be preached There's souls that have to be reached The hungry to be fed And little children to be led There's a river flowing free For the souls that are in need and I'm going to keep on working till he comes. Yes, I'm going to keep on working till he comes, till he comes. There's nothing in this world worth turning around to see. My eyes are on the prize that's awaiting me by and by. And I'm going to keep on working till he comes. And I'm going 
gonna keep on working till he comes. Thanks, Rose. The Irish. <laughs> <laughs> This is just um, a chorus that's actually in the book, 581. It's uh, very nice. It came from Australia, I think. Uh, Pastor Laurie Nanka. 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 Pastor Steve Moffat. Nanka. Uh, the Servant King. Really nice words, isn't it? Hopefully, we do it justice.
Yeah. How many of you love Oris? Yeah? Oh, we'll probably cry like this sometimes. Um, Marsha and the girls. Am I right? Yeah. Things 
at the right time. At the right time. Paddy! And God's right time. Thank you, man. He shut the charm off. <laughs> now, in tradition over the years, we have um, a little Bible quiz. And uh, the first prize is always a, a bag of chockies. <laughs> and all the people say, oh, uh, <laughs> at considerable expense, this value. <laughs> Whoever gets the most answers, you now some of the questions. Uh, for, just for fun. Uh, a couple of serious ones. And the first one I want to ask, American Bobby, for just one answer. The first day I met American Bobby, he caught me out with a little, little thing. I said, I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the reason. Okay. Now the question is, where in the Bible is the reference to the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley? The Rose no of Sharon. No The Rose of Sharon yeah. and the Lily of the Valley. Yeah. Where in the Bible? Where in the what book? Um. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> three. M is not the answer. <laughs> so, okay, Bobby, got you back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who has a uh, hand up? Songs of Solomon. One up for you. Uh, Song of Solomon. Um, I just have here in chapter two, verse one, and it is a uh, uh, the book of Solomon in the Bible oh, dedicated solely to romantic love songs, and isn't it ironic that the initials Song of Solomon. Is SOS. <laughs> think, about, think about that one now. I laughed with my son in 300 words. He must have had some memory when there was a birthday for the all. <laughs> Cost him a fortune. Anyway, that was Tom then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What was remarkable about Ben and his donkey? One hand. Grace, first up. That it spoke. Sorry? That it spoke. I'll give you that. <laughs> One up for Grace, she's my driving partner. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, pass, uh, Dave, I was going to say pass to Dave. Did you have that one? <laughs> right, okay. Um, another question. What board? <laughs> <laughs> You're a cop, I'm out here so I can see you. <laughs> okay. It's the donkey. It's about, it's mostly the black man and the other man at the time, right? It's like that. Okay. What board? What board did Jesus say? could not fall to the ground without God's knowledge. Sandra? Sparrow. One of you, Sandra. <laughs> Very good. Um, it's in Matthew 10, verse 29. Uh, what animals did Pharaoh tell Joseph he had dreamed about? This is a good one. Whoever gets this now. Pastor, I think I meant to extend you. I was in my head and I say, I passed down because it's too good of a memory. And I said, because, and you might have heard some of these questions before. So I'll give you a half. <laughs> <laughs> the, the answer was coins. So uh, I, won't, I won't ask that one again. So the bottom one. So, um, Right over here. Anybody can tell me what was Noah's profession? <laughs> <laughs> Any hands? Right, you know the extent as well. <laughs> if two, well, you've asked this question before. Anybody? I could 
Oh, I'm done to say that. Explain that. One up for you. Arc attack. Okay. Yeah. I just. just Arc attack. Yeah. When, 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 when the Lord was on the ship at night time in the dark. How did you see where he was going? Any hands? Sandra, you iron this one before? <laughs> you know? Come on. No Irish. No answers. He used floodlights. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. I, I, I'll just ask <laughs> what was the first example of maths in the Bible? Anybody? Maths. 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 Mathematics. Oh. Mathematics. Oh. Mathematics. Anybody? Any hands? Any hands? No. What a failure you lot are. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is when God called Adam to go forward to multiply. I have just two more to tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I know that bad, I mean. Bring that back to home you <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this, this is, this is the, the Americans will uh, know the answer to this, but you won't be able to give it. <laughs> <laughs> you won't give the answer, but you'll understand when, when, when the answer to it. Okay? And the question is, what money was taken onto the ark by American animals? No answers? Cecilia? Do we say Anne? No. We'll <laughs> follow this one, Dave. The duck took a bill. The frog <laughs> took a green back. <laughs> and the scum took a cent. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a good one for you. <laughs> what happened when the seventh seal was opened? This is in Revelations, okay? It was silent in heaven for half an hour. Nobody got two in a row. I tell you what, lads. I'll keep it for myself. Very good, Teddy. You were this close. <laughs> All right, last item. Joy, did you come on?
Right, that's the end of our items. Can we get a measure of that? We'll see the course before we hand over to David here. Shall we all stand for this one? Yeah, stretch up. All stand for this one. Um, 182. We have some in. Thanks for the item tonight. Great night. Shall we put our hands together? Yeah. I'm sure there's more coming tomorrow. There will be more Paddy and his children. <laughs> they are suddenly on the man. Alright, twice two. After two. One, two. He has shown me on man. such as should be saved. And uh, in Isaiah 61, 1, we heard this morning, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings, to preach the good news. And uh, yeah, that's, that's to all of us, right? The Lord has anointed me. Put your name there. 
to preach the good news. And, and that's, that's what we're here for. We're here to get, you know, I think, I don't know if they have Tupperware in, in Ireland. You have Tupperware? Yeah. Yeah. I think about Tupperware. I have a sister-in-law that was really into selling Tupperware. And they'd have meetings to learn how to put Tupperware out there more, right? To, uh, yeah. and, and that's what we do with our camps, with our meetings. Not Tupperware, but the gospel. <laughs> Like to move the gospel, right? That's what we're here for. We received power to be witnesses for the Lord. So praise the Lord. Uh, <clears throat> I was watching a, the last Sunday Irish meeting, and Pastor Chris Kernahan was giving a talk. And he talked about Papua New Guinea, and it really stirred up some memories in me. Uh, I was over there in 2017, and they had for the rally, they had a six-day rally in Garoka, and that's in the Central Islands, so a lot more people were able to go to it from PNG, and it turned out that they had around 50,000 saints there. 50,000 saints in one place, it was an outdoor venue. And it was, uh, I was told that it was the largest gathering of that, any type in, in PNG history. They had national news there with drones, you know, filming everything. It was really amazing. But in that six days, they baptized. And, and they were so gracious to let us be involved in praying for people and baptizing people. And in six days, uh, we baptized 1,885 people. We were baptized and spirit-filled. And uh, yeah, it was amazing because before somebody went down to the river to get baptized, they took all their info, where they lived, who was going to be their house leader. It was, it was so organized. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, and I got, I got home from there. Really, it was a life-changing experience for me, you know. I mean, one of the brothers estimated, or did a rough count of the prayer line one day, and there was five to 7,000 people in the prayer line. And you just go down laying hands on two people at a time praying, and you can't hear what they're saying. Pastor Godfrey says, just say hallelujah, hallelujah. But you can, you can see the lips start going, and the smile coming as they receive the Holy Spirit. And it's like being in the book of Acts. It was just so, so amazing. But uh, yeah, got back, got back to Fresno, and I was thinking about it. And you know, we've got a brother <coughs> in Fresno, brother Andy. He's originally from Taiwan, and uh, he's very analytical. He's got a master's degree in psychology. He doesn't work in that field, but he uh, he analyzes everything. So when we would do an outreach, a door knock, or go downtown, or something, he he kind of, we'd have d debates about it, because in his mind, if you, if you put effort into something, you have to see returns or it's not worth doing. And uh, he went on a trip by himself to visit the saints in Athens, Georgia. And something amazing happened while he was gone, because when he got back, it was like a different Andy. He was at every outreach, and he said, the Lord revealed to him, it's not, it's not for us to worry about seeing the, the, the rewards. It's up to us just to do the work. And he was happy with that. And it was really amazing. And, and he's still, still that way. But <clears throat> when I got back, you know, I was thinking about it. And I was thinking, wow, they had you know, that amazing revival happening in PNG. But if, if we go out and witness in Fresno, or you go out here in Ireland, or England, or, or Holland, wherever you're from, and you, if you don't see any immediate uh, returns on your investment, it's happening somewhere. It's happening somewhere. Because like we heard this morning, the unity of the Spirit. We're all connected by the Holy Spirit. 
We're like this amazing spiritual organism that circles the earth. And you might speak to somebody here, and somebody might come to the Lord in another part of the world, Australia or anywhere. So we, we need to keep that in mind. You know, revival is happening somewhere because the Lord wants it to happen. And we just, we just speak the words wherever we're at, and he does the rest. Uh, if you could turn to uh, 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18. <coughs> Just going to pick up a few verses here. It's uh, the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And in 1 Kings 18, we'll start in verse 21. So, and Elijah, Elijah came to all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal be God, follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I alone, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. And, you know, most of us know the story. Uh, Elijah had them uh, dress a bullock, and he dressed a bullock. They both built uh, wooden altars. Elijah poured water all over his. Prophets of Baal cried out to, to their thank <coughs> God all day. Nothing happened. Uh, but we'll pick it up in verse 36. It says, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O God, hear me, O Lord. Hear me, that this people might know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the, is the God. Uh, and Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. <clears throat> and I would imagine he used a sword. I, I, he may not have, but I just think he did, probably. And, uh, you know. Now, we, we read in Jude 3, right? Earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Elijah, he was, he was defending the faith. And, and it wasn't enough just to preach. You know, he was getting rid of people that were, that were deceiving others into believing a false god. And uh, I, somebody sent me a talk not long ago. I don't think I got around to listening to it, but the, the title of the talk really caught me. It was, I think it was from Pastor Brad Smith from Brisbane. But the title was, If It Can Be Destroyed by the Truth, It Should Be. If it can be destroyed by the truth, it should be. And I really, I really liked that. I really liked it. And uh, not long after seeing that, we do an outreach in Fresno every Tuesday downtown at uh, Courthouse Park. It's a park around the courthouse, and there's a bus exchange there, so you get a lot of different people, a lot of, a lot of traffic, a lot of foot traffic. And we've been going there every Tuesday for 13 years, the last 13 years. So we go, <clears throat> we go one day, and, and we're walking into the courthouse park, and there's some Jehovah Witnesses with their little stand set up. And you know, I thought, nah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my time and I walked by. And then there was another group with a stand set up. 
And I thought about that title. If it can be destroyed by the truth, it should be. And so I stopped. My, I had my Bible with me and started talking to him and, and showing him the scriptures and telling him that they were following, following a, a, an accursed organization as you read in Galatians 1. Right? If, you, if they preach any other gospel, right? They're accursed. And, and, but they had no answer. Just like the prophets of Baal, their God had no answer. And, and these people are out there and they're deceiving, they're deceiving people. And there's been a lot of times where I've just, I'm not gonna waste my time, I'm just passing by. But then I thought about that and I thought, what would Elijah do if he was walking through the park? And here are these prophets of all, really. And, or what would Paul do? You know, would they just pass by? Or would they contend for the faith? And it, it really, it really uh, encouraged me because they've been deceived themselves. They haven't heard the truth or they wouldn't be out there. And not long after that, uh, my wife and I are sitting home, it's after dinner, it's dark outside, doorbell rings, so I look at the curtains to make sure it wasn't some thugs wanting to rob me or something. <laughs> but uh, it was two young ladies, and I opened the door and started talking to them. The first thing they said was, do you know Jesus Christ? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do, yeah. And I gave them my testimony straight away. And then this, the spokesman of the two said, uh, do you read the Bible? I said, as a matter of fact, I do, every day for the last 28 years. And I still haven't figured out who they are, right? And then the, the one young lady said, have you read the Book of Mormon? And I said, as a matter of fact, I had. I have. And she said, what do you, what do you think about it? And I, I said, it's pretty good science fiction, you know, pretty, pretty good science fiction. But anyway, you know, I started showing the, the, the meat and potatoes scriptures about salvation. And the only answer they had was, well, we don't want to argue. I said, I don't either. I, you know, I want to show you what the truth is. But, but that's, that's our life. We've, we've been anointed to preach the gospel and to defend the faith, you know, contend, fight for the faith. So, yeah, praise the Lord. If you turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Sorry, verse 10. This is Apostle Paul. He says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take, in, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Sword of the Spirit. I was looking at, that, looking at a, a lot of examples about the sword. And if you take off the S, what do you have? You have Word, right? The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And, you know, sometimes people just need a little nudging with the, with the, with the sword. But sometimes they need open heart surgery, and you just gotta, you just got to go for it, you know. And and a lot of times, even if they don't listen, we get to sharpen the sword, and and we grow, and uh, yeah, and it cuts both ways also, right? Like a two-edged sword, it can cut to salvation, it can cut to damnation, but that's our job. 
that's our job. You know, to preach the truth. And uh, yeah, don't have to turn to it, but in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3 2, uh, Paul talks about uh, we are living epistles known and read by all men. Right? And our testimonies, like the testimonies we've heard here at camp, I love testimonies. They're so, so edifying to me. So they lift me up so much. But, uh, you know, the world, the world sees us on an everyday basis. They watch us. And I had an older brother that watched me and Mary for 12 years. And he kept saying, how did you do it? How, how did we do what? How did you quit the heroin and, and the cocaine and the alcohol? Show them the scriptures, right? Got to be born of God in the spirit. Ah, oh, that's too easy. There's got to be more to it than that. Right? He did that for 12 years. One night he called me on the phone and uh, said, can I come over for some prayer? And I was like, who's this? And uh, he came over. His wife received straight away. They come over the next night. He received most powerful infilling I've seen in my, my whole time in the Lord. Uh, and he was healed uh, from prostate cancer. But uh, he lasted for a while and then he fell away. He was a musician, fell back in with his mus musician buddies and, and that lifestyle. And I don't know, about seven or eight years later, the cancer came back. And uh, you know, I was I was going over and praying with him and talking to him, and, and he thought he was going to beat it, and it got to the point where he was on hospice care, and wouldn't do chemo or or radiation anymore, wouldn't take the medicine, and he finally came to the realization that he was going to die, but he wasn't repentant. He still had his buddies come over, coming over, and you know, bring him bring him drink, and and you know, he's talking bad and. He still wanted me to pray for him, but, and I kept going away saying, Lord, what's, what's wrong with him? Why isn't he repentant? He's filled with your spirit. And he got to the point where he was in a coma, and, uh, but he was just thrashing around, thrashing around, thrashing around. It was really hard to watch. And, uh, and then he finally got still, and the, the hospice nurse told me, well, he probably won't make it through the night. So I come out of the gym the next day, and I had six missed calls on my telephone. And it was from his phone. And I thought, it's his wife calling me to tell me he's passed. And so I called. My brother answers the phone. Hey, Dave, how you doing? You coming over today? I thought I missed the Super Bowl, but they haven't played yet. You know, I'm thinking, what's going on? <laughs> He said, I, 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 uh, he said, I wanted to pray in tongues last night, but I couldn't. But I knew if you were here, I could. So come on over. And, and it's just, you know, to me it was the grace of God, you know, and the mercy that whatever he went through while he was in that coma, the Lord, the Lord changed him and brought him to repentance. And I went over and we prayed in the Spirit, and we had awesome fellowship for about a week. And, uh, you know, he totally ends of the word and, and wanting to pray and praying in tongues. And then he quietly went to sleep. And, but it was just such an amazing thing. But it all came from our testimonies. You know, he watched us for 12 years. And you never know who's watching you. A workmate, a schoolmate, a neighbor. You know, I had a guy... I played handball at gym, and I had a guy say the other day, he said, I, I've been around you for eight years, and I've never heard you say a bad word. And to me, it's like, well, that's a no-brainer. that We just don't do that. But I, I quoted the scripture, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And he, it was like a shock to him. That's in the Bible? <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, it's our testimony. It's Nathan. We're watched all the time. Second uh, Corinthians chapter five. Sorry if I'm a little 
my voice is a little shaky. I'm suffering from sleep deprivation. <laughs> oh, take that back. Ephesians chapter 6. This carries on from what I was reading before. It says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador. Again, put your name there. I am an, an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.20, it says we are ambassadors for Christ. And, you know, to think of an, an ambassador in the world, you know, they're very important people, have very important jobs, but nothing compared to being an, an ambassador for Christ. We have the best job on the planet, right? And it's a privilege. You know, I think about that a lot, and it's, the Lord entrusts us with the gospel. He depends on us. He counts on us. He has faith in us, right, to do that job. Uh, come across a, a thing on television recently, and it was like reality TV, which I never watched. But this was about cowboys, right? And I grew up half, half the time on, on my dad's farm, and, he always had horses, and I, that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to be a cowboy. And I watched all the cowboy shows on Saturday on TV. But this was called the, the Cowboy Ultimate Showdown. And what it was, they got like 10 to 15 cowboys from all over the United States and Canada. And they went to this ranch in Wyoming. And they... They divided the, the cowboys into two teams and they competed against each other in different uh, jobs you do on a ranch, on a cattle ranch. You know, roping and, you know, uh, giving medicine to the cattle or, or separating herds and all this kind of stuff. So they've been doing this from sunrise to almost sundown one day. And then they sprung a surprise on them and said, okay, you're gonna, now you're going to take your herd each team and go up in these mountains and, and watch them overnight and make sure they, they stay together and then drive them down in the morning and load them on trucks. So it was way below freezing in Wyoming and these five cowboys <laughs> went that they kept cameras on the night, infrared cameras, and uh, four of them built a fire and were in their sleeping bags right, by the fire. And one cowboy was watching the herd. And he came two or three times during the night saying, hey, I need some help. I need some help. Get up and help me. And they just like, they're, they're too warm, too comfortable, and they're sleeping bags by the fire. And so the, the next day, the judges got them all together, and they, and they talked to them. And the prize for the, for the winner of this competition got $50,000 in cattle and a bunch of other ranching stuff so they could start their own herd. And, and what the judges were saying was, we wanted to see how, how important that prize was to you, how much you, you really wanted it, and that only one out of the four really showed that, that, that hunger and desire to win. And, uh, yeah, praise the Lord, we have a job to do, and, and we're not going to be sleeping. I'm sure all of us here are on the job, so, uh, yeah, praise the Lord. I just thought it was, a, it was a good example to me. You know, it, it can be very easy to, to be comfortable, you know, and not, you know, a lot of times, I, I praise God that, that I organize the outreaches in Fresno because a lot of times I don't want to go. You know, I just don't feel like going but I don't have a choice, so it makes it easy. It's Tuesday, okay, we have an outreach, and I go. And every time, before we even start talking to people, 
I want to do it. You know, it's 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 not it's not a job per se. It's a joy. Right? It's a joy to see people come along and take hold of the truth. Yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, last scripture, Revelation 22. Revelation 22, one verse, verse 12. <clears throat> Jesus speaking, and he says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. And the word reward in the Greek means dues paid for work or wages. Right? So we've been called to do a job, and it's the greatest job on the planet. And not only do we see rewards here, I remember the first the first person that I that I witnessed to that came along and got baptized and received the Spirit. And the only thing I can come close to relating it to was when I went to the hospital and saw our firstborn child. You know, it was just wow. I mean, only this is an eternal birth, right? And uh, there's nothing more rewarding. Nothing more that I that I would love to see is just people receiving the Holy Ghost, you know, and then walking on the ways of the Lord. So we we've, we've got a reward coming, you know, and God's word does not return to him void. It accomplishes what he would have accomplished. And you know, just like in the natural, if 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 you get hired to do a job and you don't do the work, you don't get paid. I I read a, I read an article, I think it was in Readers. Digest a while back, and it's about this guy. And his, he said his grandmother, when he was young, used to say, "See the work. See the work." And what she meant was, don't wait for somebody to ask you when you see something that needs to be done. Do it, right? See the work. And and we see it all around us every day. We're out there in the world, and we see the work that needs to be done. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we've been hired to do a job, we preach the gospel, our testimony reflects the words that we preach, and the Lord's coming quickly, you know, and the greatest reward, the greatest paycheck that's ever been known is eternal life, and we're all going to receive it if we just continue on, and all the people said. Amen. 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 We'll have to pray to my mom, that we need to be in that front or in the back.